Hey guys, it's Summer Gosh. Anyone who has watched my channel for a while knows I do not feature replays often. However, I saw this replay on what replays, and oh my freaking god, it's incredible. So, <laughs> okay, where do we begin? This is Hul underscore. He's in the clan Yujo, so this is a North American clan. So he's playing on the NA server, and he's playing his Leopard 1. Now, I am very curious about the Leopard 1. I think it's a fantastic tank and haven't played it enough after the buff. And so I was just watching replays. I wanted to see how this thing performs in like day-to-day -day gameplay. And uh, well, this is certainly not day-to-day -day gameplay. Holy shit. So he's on the map Serene Coast. First thing to realize is they have a very balanced team lineup. So, you know, I'm, you don't necessarily need to count their tanks in this case because they've got a good mix of everything. And what Hul decides to do is he's taking his Leopard 1 to the eastern side. Now... I have never done this. It's a very popular play, especially for sniping tanks. I don't know what I think of it. It works very well in this case. And basically the idea is if you play this rock right here, you're looking for eyes on TDs. Now the problem is this play is contingent to someone scouting for you. And you can see he's got a T49 who's kind of scouting, but uh, you know, it doesn't look, he hasn't had damage yet as an example. So he's gonna look for a shot in the 54 lightweight. This thing has 420 alpha, if I recall. Yeah, it's 420 alpha, so <laughs> it's incredible. Gets one into the 54 and then there's a patent in the mid as well. And you would kind of expect a bit more mediums to be in, well, no, sorry, TDs. You'd expect more tank destroyers to be in the mid. You would never expect an M48 patent there, and you can see he's there, and Hul really isn't going to be able to get a shot. The probability that this guy is going to be here, it, like, drive into Hul's gun is very low, and, uh, well, this is this is the opening stage of the game over with. You're done down a minute. Now, what you have to do is you have to try to find something else to do, and you can see Hul does that. So I think his patience is really good because he's not being too patient, and he's not being too... Um, impatient either and so what he does is he looks at the map he's not getting shots in the m48 pattern he's not getting shots in the 54 lightweight or light tank and what he's going to do is he's going to move towards the one line because if you look at the map he might be able to get some sniping damage over there now hilariously he's got an e100 scouting for him so in his sniping tier 10 medium he's got this e e100 who's decided to play the freaking bowl as he comes over here i have no idea if he's even realized this but basically he's going to be able to support this e100 and the E100, if that guy starts to be aggressive, will almost act as bait. So it works out perfectly in the situation. Gets a shot into the 54. The second one goes in. That guy's not going anywhere. He is tracked, of course. And this is where the Leopard 1's accuracy can be really great. You can see he can hit anywhere in his aiming circle and he's almost always going to hit the t54 so that's really nice now he got the shots into the 54 the enemy team is not it's hard to tell if they're going to win the one line or not basically he looks to his right to see if he can get a shot in the 60p really good situational awareness if he looks at his map now he'll see he might have a shot on an m48 pattern gets one into the 60p doesn't really notice the pat yeah he notices the pattern perfect so he's going to put a shot he's not able to but whatever he looked he's got an ebr in front of him and now the enemy team is certainly winning the one line. You can see the 140s flying to the 430 and 62A over there, and so you would expect the one line to be falling really quickly. Luckily, he's got two tier 10 meat heavies who are playing the bull, an AMX 50B and an E100, and this is what creates like the circumstances for this fantastic game. He's in the he's in a perfect sniping position, and he's got two full HP heavies right here acting as bait. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous how. <laughs> It not only did one E100 go there, which is not surprising, most E100 drivers aren't that good, but a 50B decided to follow, which is wild. Now, IS-32 is looking for shots on the E100, uh, you, Hul is not spotted at all, so he's able to get one in. A one-shot 140 looks to be yoing a 50B, which is a very brave decision. 263s is in the open, he's going to get that shot. The Patton might spot him right here, and you can see he notices that, and so this is how much this guy must be watching the map. He saw the Patton, knew to get down, because he thought he might be spotted, which is you know really insane now is 3 is in the open he gets a shot off he's up to 4k damage nearly strv's in the open as well yoloing the 100 this is an easy shot for him gets that for that's 4k right there 54 light tank gets spotted i would probably not shoot the 54 light tank because i'd rather shoot at the strv but it's whatever he gets the kill on the lt with a high roll now he's able to get this shot on the strv and he's got gold he's shooting full gold right here so you know, it goes in. A Heat will, generally speaking, pen the front of the STRV, but APCR, I think, has more issues. But there you go. He gets the side of the STRV, goes in 5.4k damage at this point. Looks at the map. You can see that they're starting to push down the 9 line, but that should be covered by the 4 tanks over there. He's going to try to get a shot probably on the top of this... Uh 
263 right here. The problem is the 100 is blocking the shot. He's not able to get it, but shot to the Udez. Also manages to get the track. He's up to 5.7k with that shot. And there's three full HP tanks in front of him who are going to be able to basically kill this Centurion. Unfortunately, that one bounces. And from this point, he's not going to be getting much more eyes, especially after this shot right here. So we'll see if the Udez gets spotted, but I suspect once the Udez gets spotted, unspotted the how is he still lit wild okay so the Udez is still getting farmed which is insane who's gonna obviously stay here until he's able to get the kill doesn't go in which is wild but you know there you go the Udez is left as a one shot and you can see once he stops getting shot he has the situational awareness to realize there's more damage and uh, opportunity to help out the team by going over to the 890 and you can see there's 60 tp right here now most players, when confronted with this type of situation, would try to flank the 60 TP. What he's doing is he's playing this angle intelligently. He's not overexposing himself to the 60 TP. To YOLO the 60 TP would mean you open yourself up to tanks back here, which, you know, you're probably going to get sniped by the E3. And you can see, even though it wasn't the E3 back there, there was a 57 Heavy and someone else. So he's playing this really well not to YOLO the 60 TP. The Tortoise is face hugging. They're able to finish off the 60. And now there's three full HP tanks and already who are pushing in the nine line and then three high hp tanks who are also pushing in the one two line so who has to get out of here because the Patton, the object 263 and the Udez are going to flank him if he stays in his position and there's no cover from them if he continues to be here but you know he's starting to get out he probably would have taken that shot if he was able to and i think it would have been a decent shot to take and you can see the patterns right there so he misses a shot on the move the 263 is out he got out just in time which is wild and now they've got the full hp 263 the one shot Udas, and this pattern all pushing in now Artie is probably going to die right here you can see he's playing this angle pretty well he's going to try to get a shot as the pattern farms the Artie. Artie blocks the shot a bit he's able to get the tracking shot which is great and in this situation you'd want to focus down the Udez just to reduce the amount of guns shooting back at you as you carry you can see Hul is able to get the kill perfect job to him and now he's going to deal with a hull down m48 pattern and a 263 now this is a bit of a weird poke i I'm very surprised that this Patton is not taking advantage of Fool right here. But there you go. He puts a shot almost into the commander's hatch of the guy. And this 263 is going to be in a position to just basically YOLO Hool, and that's kind of what you'd expect. He's he's the 263 is not fighting anyone, and so he's going to push in. And Hool knows that. So you can see he's falling back towards his teammates. This is going to be probably to try to deal with either the 263 who's likely to be flanking him. There you go. This is exactly what he's doing. He's trying to deal with the 263 who's almost certainly going to try to flank him. Now, 263 is right there. He puts a shot into the lower plate, takes a hit. He's going to be able to beat the 263's reload, but once the 263 once he fires, he can expect the M48 pattern to start coming behind him, right? The M48 pattern's not getting shot at. He's going to move forward to try to flank the Leopard. Now, this happens a lot slower than I expected, and you can see Hul knows he's actually got this timing perfect. He turns around to deal with the pattern who's inevitably flanking him. You can see his team loses Badger, and there you go. The M48's right here. He gets the first shot off. The M48's probably going to put one into him. He does. Hul's going to reload first, so he's going to try to take advantage of this. You can see that one's certainly going to go in, and in this situation, you'd expect the 263 to push through, so my play would be to push the pattern before you get flanked by the 263. So, is he going to do that? 263's on the map right now. Doesn't get the kill on the pattern. This is rough. Look at this shit. Holy shit. So, you can see, if he had pushed the pattern, he wouldn't have to deal with this. The 263 is going to try to ram him. He, I don't think he even knows. And fair enough, right? Like, he's got a he's got a pattern right in front of him. He's down to a three shot. This is how he deals with it. We're going to have to watch. So, 263 puts a shot into him, rams him, turns his tank a bit, and now he's going to be forced to kill the pattern. And, in my opinion, he has to run away. And that's exactly what he's doing. Now, the Leopard has really shitty gun depression to the rear and because he's definitely not going to outrun a 263 he's going to have to use this 26 uh the m48 patent for cover right here looking for shot underneath the patent really brilliant and now the 263 is giving him the opportunity to circle so he's going to do that he has to run he cannot stick around in my opinion and farm the 263 because there's other tanks coming so you can see the e3 is coming this is fantastic play holy shit um oh my god he got out which is wild and from here you would almost expect the 263 to the T57 Heavy to be with that E3 over there, so you know, he might be here, but he's probably with that E3, and what Hul's doing is he's running away. Now, most players would try to get to here just to get safe as quickly as possible. If he were to do that, he wouldn't be able to run away at all, and so this is the perfect play right here. Forcing them to try to get on cap or chase him down when he's in a Leopard 1 is perfect. Now, he spots the E3. The E3 doesn't spot him, which is great, and what's going to happen is they're probably just going to sit on cap. They've got four tanks left. He's a one-shot, and that's how he's going to try to take advantage of them. 263 is a one-shot. He catches him in the open, which is amazing, and now 
already is going to be a threat, and you can see this T57 heavy is YOLOing. So this is where the 420 Alpha comes in great. That guy's 830 HP. He's basically a two-shot for Hul. So Hul puts a shot into him, high rolls, and the guy... No, it actually low rolls. He is on 461 HP, so now he needs a high roll to kill this guy. The Artie just fired. And on average, he will not kill the T57 Heavy right here. And you can see, puts a shot into him, gets... Okay, so most people... I'm going to pause it, because most people would say he got lucky right here. The reality is the T57 Heavy got lucky to hit him. So both of them got lucky, but whatever. The T57's pushing in, and the T57's a one-shot, and he's got already support. So his decision to stop right here is absolutely the right one. Hul decides to go for a shot in between the tracks. He's struggling with the gun depression, manages to get the kill, and this is where I'd be worried about Artie, because Artie will be loaded kind of about now. So we'll see if he gets clicked. He's going over to the A90. Now, as he's doing this, he will be spotted. So what he's doing is he's probably going to have to turn around or come up from some... Yeah, there you go. He's turning around. This is the right idea. So the E3 will be expecting him over here he faked it really well he drove for a really long time and so what Hul is going to do is he's coming back because the e3 is going to have to have his ass to one of these corners down here he's going to have the rear the problem with this play is he's opening himself up to Artie. so with the fake in this direction it's very likely he'll die to Artie in this type of situation and there's nothing he can do about it he just has to hope Artie doesn't hit him basically so he's got 15 seconds left he's gonna have to pop up right now or so to try to get a reset I think he's expecting that the E3 is in this corner and I would say that's very likely we'll see does he pop up he's got five seconds left yeah he does there you go and the E3 was facing kind of both directions he gets a shot into the E3 unfortunately he did not damage him I think getting a second shot's very risky, and you can see, because Artie's just going to be shooting right at him. So there you go, Artie shell lands, E3 knows where he is, and I think what he's got to do is he's got to pretend he's going up this way, get unspotted, and then go come up basically on the other side of the map, or come up from some different angle, especially with the Artie threat right here. Now there could be an argument for going and killing Artie, I think you don't, in most cases, it's not worth the risk, you just get shotguns, so we'll see about that, but basically he is going to flank the E3, and... I often, when I'm in these situations, I get antsy because this type of play takes so long that you would assume this E3 knows what you're doing because you're taking so long to make it happen. And uh, he might, you know, guess that you're not in this position anymore and probably trying to flank him. So we'll see what this E3 does. You can see Hul is going to pull up right to the right right here, which is incredible. He knows where the E3 last was and the E3 totally fell for this. He's going to go for the track and the damage right there. The E3 is probably going to repair it. He doesn't, which is incredible. He doesn't have a repair kit, I guess. He's going to get the second shot into the track, and that should give him the kill. Now, Artie's not really a threat here, in my opinion, unless Artie has moved up to P1, but we've already been shot by Artie, so that's fine. He's able to get the last kill of the game. He's up to 12,500 damage, and now, well, Artie just showed him exactly where he is. So we know Artie's basically an A5, and Hul has to go find out how to kill the Artie. Now, <laughs> this is probably the most important lesson of the replay. This has been a very detailed replay, so I haven't remembered. You saw, like, I had to guess what would happen, especially against the 263. I know exactly what happens at the end here. And this is the most common mistake that everyone carrying makes, and they underestimate the capacity of Artie, which is, like, it's totally fair. Every YouTuber ever has said, you know, just shoot HE at Artie. They can't, they're defenseless when they're alone. The, the the probability that Artie ruins your carry, in my experience, is about 8 out of 10. And so, driving on the tracks like this, when Artie could be in one of these bushes... You know, if the Artie has Binox, which he won't have, he's an M53, most Artie I would advise running Binox on. If he has Binox, he should be sitting in one of these bushes and spot Hul and just shoot him for a He doesn't even have to hit, you know? So, um... Cool. Very, very aggressive play. I think this is really risky. I would not advise doing this at all. Normally, Artie would be sitting in these bushes, and they're not. And Hul has about 2 minutes and 10 seconds to try to uh, finish off the rest of the game. So, the question from here is, where is Artie? And I think if you've got a game this good, you would want to kill Artie, fair enough. But if you don't have a game like this, if it's 5k damage and you're in this situation, just cap out. Take the win. The extra 400 damage isn't worth it, you know? And so... Who will guess is that Artie's on the 9-0, you can see he's driving by, he assumes Artie's in one of these areas, and the Leopard is so big, I really don't like how he's clearing these corners, he's probably gonna die. You can see, he gets spotted, Artie misses, hits him for 150 damage, and uh, well, that's the game. Oh my god, that was 210,000 credits. 13,000 damage like he was 2 HP off from 13,000 damage if he had hit one more shot on the arty It would have been a 13k game regardless. It's basically a 13k game. Let's be real um, 
yeah, holy shit, what a game. That was only a thousand base XP. I suspect a lot of that is because he was sniping. Still got a mastery badge. The Leopard 1, to me, looks like one of the most fun tanks in the game right now, and really... <laughs> it's making me want so i i have the free xp to get one and i suspect i will because holy shit this this replay and a couple others that i've seen today have absolutely sold me on this tank so that was the game he fired all gold i really don't care it's tier 10 the meta almost required i think all gold is a bit retarded but it's his credits he can waste them on tier 8 premiums if he wants whatever um that was a phenomenal game i really enjoyed watching that thanks for so much for posting this on what replays it was a blast and um yeah if you like this video and you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and i hope to see you around later guys Bye bye